We will now like to start at the Innovative City Forum 2022. The Innovative City Forum is an international conference on the theme of envisioning the future of cities and lifestyles. On behalf of the organizer, I would like to uh, call upon uh, Dr. Heizo uh, Takenaka, the chairman of the Institute for uh, Urban Strategies of the Mori Memorial Foundation and director of Academy Hills for the opening remarks. Dr. Takenaka, please. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is uh, Heizo uh, Takenaka. Um, this is the 10th uh, anniversary for the Innovative City Forum 2022. Uh, it is a great pleasure that we are holding this in person uh, this year. Uh, last night, I'm sure, you have uh, lost some sleep uh, because of uh, uh, watching soccer. Uh, it was uh, very exciting, and we hope that uh, today's session will be uh, exceeding the level of excitement uh, uh, compared to the soccer game yesterday. So uh, this is the 10th uh, uh, forum uh, with the support of uh, 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 Murray Building and the organizers. I have been impressed by the fact that uh, we have uh, 19,000 uh, people participating uh, in this forum so far, and the uh, speakers number of speakers was 411, out of which 131, or 34 percent, or more than one third, were uh, non-Japanese speakers from overseas, um, coming from 31 countries of the world. We have been able to continue this forum because of uh, uh, your support. Uh, now uh, we are uh, a forum uh, considering uh, the future of the cities and limestone. The past 10 years, uh, uh, many events have taken place against this backdrop. Uh, we are uh, taking up the topic of beyond transition, the future uh, that is happening before us today. Transition uh, is uh, the word I wanted to have included. Uh, I requested this. Uh, this uh, is uh, the uh, change in regime uh, in English language. When, when the Berlin Wall uh, came down, uh, the socialist uh, uh, nations uh, um, made a transition to the market economy, to the market uh, uh, regime. So uh, there was a sudden change, uh, which is uh, considered to be a transition. Meiji restoration is the same. And uh, in the post Cold War uh, regime was also similar. So, uh, in terms of uh, transition, it uh, can uh, provide us uh, various lessons. We are in the midst of uh, this uh, transition today. Uh, taking this into uh, consideration, based on this premise, uh, we will consider the future of the uh, city as well as our lifestyle. And uh, we have engaged in discussions at the program committee uh, on this topic. There are many uh, lessons to be learned from transitions. I'd like to emphasize two out of the many. Transition does not occur um, immediately. It's over time. Gradually, a new uh, system uh, will be established. We are living in a uh, peaceful world. based on the UN. That was our prevailing view, uh, but uh, uh, on the 24th of February, uh, with the, uh, Russia's uh, aggression into Ukraine, we uh, have uh, changed our understanding, uh, and uh, globalization is required. Uh, we are gathering uh, wisdom from all over the world, inside from the world. Uh, the best product uh, is uh, to be um, imported and exported, uh, but uh, there is a fundamental uh, conflict uh, between uh, U.S. and China, the authoritarian and uh, the uh, liberal um, economy, the free economy, democracy, uh, are uh, juxtaposed accordingly. Uh, so uh, globalization is no longer uh, sufficient. Uh, the part, uh, the 
may be used. And uh, for these ones, we have to think about the origin. Even uh, drinking a cup of coffee, we have to consider where the coffee beans have come from, what kind of labor have been utilized for uh, producing that uh, uh, coffee. So it's not unconditional uh, globalization anymore. Uh, what is more familiar to us is that uh, in Japan, we are living a safe uh, society. But uh, in the safe uh, society, uh, leader of uh, Japan, uh, former Prime Minister Abe, has been uh, shot and uh, lost his life. I recently went to uh, the Prime Minister Abe's house. I have uh, met with uh, his wife, Akia, as well as his mother. and. Uh, so uh, there are significant changes taking place. Uh, the UN, trade, uh, and everything around us uh, uh, must uh, undergo change. Uh, so uh, we are indeed uh, faced uh, with the age of uh, transition. Uh, we have to bear in mind that it don't and uh, um, in uh, the 1868, uh, Meiji Restoration took place. Uh, but the Meiji uh, government uh, had to uh, pay wages uh, to the samurais. And uh, this was a major burden. And therefore, in order to have uh, military power, uh, this system had to be uh, abandoned. And uh, um, sign non uh, event uh, took place. So it took nine or 10 years uh, for the transition to take place. Uh, by the same token, the post uh, uh, Cold War perestroika it was advocated by uh, Gorbachev. And what is mentioned by the uh, uh, the, to achieve the Budapest Agreement took nine years uh, to be achieved. Uh, so this is a context we have to bear in mind uh, uh, immediately before us, uh, Ukraine um, war, as well as the COVID uh, um, are also very important. Uh, but uh, in the background, there is a major transition that is taking place uh, that we have to constantly uh, bear in mind. There is also another lesson to be learned. Uh, in this transition, uh, technology uh, innovation takes place in a significant manner in the major restoration. Uh, it was based on uh, the feudal system, um, based on agriculture, and industrialization took place thereafter, uh, which was driven by uh, changes in technology. In the post uh, Cold War, uh, the technological change uh, was the internet uh, in the 1980s, the end of the 1980s. The military use of internet uh, was uh, introduced to the private sector as well. In 1995, Windows 95 uh, was introduced and it was made available to the households as well. Windows 95 is not understood by the young people today, but I'm sure the audience today will understand the importance of this. So there was this very large technological transformation that took place at that time. And because of that transformation, there was a transition. Maybe you could put it that way as well. And in fact, that's what we see today. Uh, we have Joey Ito, uh, who was a uh, former director of MIT Media Lab, and he was at the cutting edge of this. Now this is the fourth industrial revolution, and we have new uh, technology transformations taking place, and that's going from Web 2 to Web 3. So he will talk about this. In 2007, iPhone was launched. And we all were able to access digital network. And that's where the big data was gathered. And we have AIs and deep learning, which were commercialized. And we have AI, IoT, big data, sharing economy. So we have been able to welcome this age of industrial revolution 4.0. So when you think about city and lifestyle, we must shed spotlight on technology. So I know that Professor Ito will talk about that. But that means that at the same time, that's a behavior change of people. And it's a change of the mindset as well. So mindset changes, lifestyle changes. And we will be needing to deal with the changes in art, uh, which is directly linked to our creativity. And I know that uh, Nanjo-san will talk about this later on. And we, if we have art, of course, we need to look at the changes in the space in which we live in, the city as well. 
and there's an overlay of COVID as well, and we have seen changes in lifestyle as well. So how does that connect to the issues of city? And those are sort of discussions we have had over the last decade, but because of this unexpected changes that took place for a couple of years, uh, the picture we drew uh, 10 years ago about the future of the city and how has that really become after 10 years. I think this will be discussed later on by Ch Professor Ishikawa as well. So we have this very big picture today. You know, we are in this age of transition, but the challenges that we face today are extremely important to us. So we will talk about technology, art, and about cities. So these are sort of all uh, one dimension, but we're connecting all of them together, which makes Innovative City Forum very unique and very valuable in that sense. So I hope that you will listen to the three speakers after this, and then we will have some discussion time after that. And that will be followed by comments and questions from the floor. Maybe 10, 15 minutes, it won't be very long, but we look forward to getting your feedback as well. So we hope that uh, this will become interactive for you. We look forward to your active participation as well. So like I said at the beginning, maybe you're a little sleepy because you watch TV till uh, very late at night, but I hope you enjoyed this time today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Takenaka.